So when it comes time to actually host your application, there are hundreds of providers to choose from. There's AWS and Heroku, uh, Google Compute Engine, uh, DigitalOcean, Azure or Azure. Actually, not even really sure how to say that. But the point is there are hundreds of providers to choose from, so which one is the right one for you? Well, stick around because I've got some tips that will help you figure out that process. Hey, I'm Will Button, and this is DevOps for Developers, where I teach you how to build, grow, and scale your application using DevOps principles, even if you don't have a DevOps team. So when it comes time to deploy your application, there are hundreds of providers to choose from. I like to break them up into two different camps. So in the first camp, we have what I consider the do-it-yourself providers, and this is AWS, GCE, and Azure. And there are some others in this in this category, you know, like I think IBM has their own platform, Red Hat has theirs, but for our purposes, let's just stick with those three. In the other camp, we have the do it for you providers, and these are guys like Heroku and DigitalOcean and Engine Yard. And there's actually in this category, there are literally hundreds of others to choose from. Some of them are really, really good. I just haven't used them. The ones that I have used and that I'm going to talk about here are primarily Heroku and DigitalOcean. But the things that we're gonna talk about here aren't really specific to any provider, so it's not gonna impact what you get out of this video either way. So to understand which camp you should be in, let's talk about the pros and cons of each and what the overriding thought process behind choosing one is. For me, the first thing that I look for are the resources and skills that I have available in the team that I'm working with. So what I'm looking for is anyone on my team who has a particular set of skills or background that's used by one of the providers. For example, someone may have AWS skills or someone may have you know, extensive experience working with Heroku. So that would be part one that would skew me towards one provider versus the other. The other part is does that person or those people have the time available to work on this? Um, if you have someone who's got a lot of experience with something like AWS, but they're fully committed to another project that can't be changed or they can't be pulled from that project, having that skill set really isn't going to do you any good. So in the scenario where we have someone who has a particular skill set that's specific to a provider or they have experience with a provider, to me, that's a really strong indicator to go in that direction if they're available as a key resource for managing this part of the infrastructure. Now, in a scenario where you don't have experience or someone who has experience available to you, then it's kind of anything goes, right? So let's narrow that down. And we're going to do that by talking about the pros and cons of each of the providers to see what fits with your business model the best. Let's start by talking about the do it for you providers, you know, someone like Heroku. So the big advantages to someone like that is really, it's implied in the name, it's a do it for you thing. You know, you log in or you create your account, you tie the account with your source code, either through GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever you're using. And then you click a few buttons and they manage the deployment of your application. Along with that, you get a bunch of other stuff. You know, they'll do the monitoring for it. They'll track your metrics, your performance metrics. Um, they'll do the scaling, the auto scaling up and the auto scaling down. And in the cases of in the case of someone like Heroku, they actually have alerts as well. So if your application starts misbehaving or if you exceed certain performance thresholds, they'll send you an alert so that you know what's going on and you can respond to it. The ease of integration is also another really strong point for these types of providers. Your application is most likely going to need a database and with someone like Heroku, um, and just for the record, I'm not specifically plugging Heroku here or trying to pitch them as better than anyone else. It's just one of the ones I have a lot of experience with. Anyway, if you need a database, you know, you can just click on the button and install a database and they provision it for you, whether you need Postgres or MySQL. Same thing if you need a, um, something like Redis or any different tools like that. More than likely, they're also going to have a pre-configured pipeline and configuration for whatever your type of application you're running. So if you're using 
Node.js as an API or Ruby on Rails, they've got a ton of experience dealing with that. They've got a configuration pre-built for you and you just plug into that and then take off running. Now for the disadvantages of someone like that, you're stuck with whatever configuration they provide you for the most part. If you have some out of band scenario, it may not be able, you may not be able to customize their specific options to work with that. One specific example I can think of is Heroku doesn't have a Mongo database offering in their platform. So if your application is built on Mongo database, you're stuck at this point with either using a third party hosted service like Atlas or building your own Mongo database in something like AWS and then doing that integration yourself. Now you can certainly do that, but sometimes that increases the complexity of your architecture. And when you do that, it makes it harder to distribute that knowledge across your team and also introduces not only additional points of failure, but additional points where you may not be able to scale readily and it can also introduce security vulnerabilities as well. The last disadvantage of someone like Heroku or these do it for you providers is they may not have the features that you want or need. We specifically just mentioned MongoDB as an example. And in the case where they don't have that, again, you're forced to either choose a different provider or come up with your own limited workarounds to make that work. And you want to really evaluate that, you know, is the cost of doing this workaround worth the other features that you get from that provider? Or should you be choosing a different provider that either has those features or where you can build those features yourself with tighter integration? So let's talk about the do-it-yourself providers now. In the list of advantages there, We've got first and foremost, the fact that you get complete control over everything. So no matter what your architecture looks like, you can more than likely build it in someone like AWS or Azure. This includes things like implementing tighter security too. So if you have multiple applications running, you can configure it so that application A can't talk to application B unless it goes through a specific route with a specified authentication. And taking that even one step further, you can tighten down the security so that the developers for application A have access to all the resources they need to run their application, but they don't have access to any of the resources for application B. Those options go not only beyond security, but you get options in how you configure your external facing firewalls, uh, how your databases are configured, where you host and run your applications at, whether you want the West Coast, East Coast, a mix of both, or go worldwide into different geographic data or geographic regions. And then one of the primary advantages for using someone like AWS is better cost control and potentially lower costs. So I say potentially because there are a lot of scenarios I've encountered over the years where people implement something in AWS and for example, they put a lot of data in S3 or they build an auto scaling solution that scales up, but isn't configured to scale back down. And so at the end of the month, they get hit with this huge bill and they weren't really expecting it. And that takes us right into the disadvantages of someone like AWS. And that disadvantage is that you own all the mistakes that you make. If you build something incorrectly, whether that costs you money or creates a security vulnerability that leads to you getting hacked. It was your decision path that led you there, and so you own the solution for fixing that. One of the other disadvantages of the big three of AWS, Azure, and GCE is there's a steeper learning curve. You know, with someone like Heroku, you integrate your repository, click a few buttons, and a deployment's working. With AWS or one of the other providers, you start with a blank slate, so you have to build everything. You build your VPC, you build your networking layer, you build your CI CD solution, you build what your application infrastructure is going to look like, whether you're using uh, serverless functions or Docker containers or EC2 instances, and you have to build all of that yourself. So when I paint the picture like that, you may be thinking, why on earth would I ever use AWS? And that's a great question. I'm actually glad you asked. 
So one of the big reasons, I kind of touched on it a little bit in the advantages, is cost control. And that's usually the biggest motivator I see for applications migrating from someone like Heroku over to AWS. There are a mul multitude of scenarios where you can operate at large, large scales in AWS cheaper than you could operate the same application over on Heroku. Now, one of the, one of the reasons for that is Heroku themselves run on AWS. So your Heroku bill is gonna be the cost of the AWS services that you're consuming, plus the cost of the tools that Heroku has built and provided for you. But once you reach a certain scale in your application, you're more than likely gonna have the resources on your team that can replicate the features that Heroku is providing for you. So by taking that over to your own development, bringing it in-house, so to speak, you'll be able to you know, leverage the same AWS environment that you've been using, but take advantage of the cost, the cost savings that you get from doing it yourself in AWS. Another reason why you may want to go with someone like GCE, Azure, or AWS is just one of those really unique or very complicated infrastructures where you're taking advantage of a lot of the resources that aren't available in someone like Heroku. An example of that might be dynamically provisioned environments that integrate with your DNS. You know, in something like AWS, you can have your CI CD server build and deploy that environment. And at the same time, it creates a DNS entry and then returns that DNS entry so that everyone has access to that environment. So one last question I'm going to address in this that I've actually had asked quite a few times is can you run large applications on the do it for you providers like Heroku? And the answer is absolutely yes. Heroku themselves are running on AWS, so by default, you have access to all of the infrastructure resources that AWS makes available to their customers. In addition to that, Heroku has a great set of tooling, as do some of the other providers. Again, I'm not trying to you know, shine a light on Heroku here. Um, they have a great tool set, and there are some really, really large companies that have already proven that you can run on those providers. So scale is usually not the limiting factor for you choosing someone like Heroku versus choosing someone like AWS. So let's wrap all this up and summarize everything I've talked about in this video. You've got two types of providers, the do-it-yourself and do-it-for-you. The primary driver for which one you choose is largely going to be dependent on any existing skills and resources that you have on your team. If you do, that's a pretty compelling indicator that that might be the right provider for you. But if you don't have anything like that, anyone on your team like that, then it's kind of an open playing field and you've got to decide which you have more of. Is it time or, or resources? You know, if you need to just get your application deployed and just get it launched, then someone like Heroku might be a better choice than having to go to AWS or one of the other do-it-yourself providers and build your infrastructure because that's going to take some time and resources before you can actually launch your application. So that's kind of how I approach it, the pros and cons of each. If you have other thoughts or if you have different ideas on how to solve this problem, uh, shoot them down in the comments down below. Love to see them. And that's all I got. So thanks for watching.